My name is David Daniel Ball and these are the headlines for Tuesday, the 24th of February, 2009. Victorian threat looms again, 500 fireys battling Dalesford Blaze. Brits walk free after four years of Guantanamo torture. 11-year-old accused killer charged as an adult. Boy killed by exploding office chair. Australian car industry needs to reinvent itself. Hughes Oscars performance dazzles US. Third arrest in Knox Grammar child sex investigation. One third of voters unsatisfied with Rudd, says news poll. Bly enters election campaign with minor swings threatening seats. New South Wales tunnel plan shelved over feared voter backlash. Drive-by victims shot in kneecaps. Egypt arrests three over deadly bizarre bombing. Heath's quiet determination honoured by family and peers. And in comments, new train is far from free. It's being touted as a free service, but the epping to Chatswood is anything but, according to Alan Jones. Chances improve by Tim Blair. The beheading of Asiya Hassan opens a window. This is a horrible tragedy, but it gives us a window, says Abdul Ghaffur, editor of the anthology Living Islam Out Loud, American Muslim Women Speak. The next time a woman comes to her imam and says, he hit me, the reply might not be, be patient, sister. Is there anything you did, sister? Is there anything you can do? The chances are greater the imam will say, this is unacceptable. It's a breakthrough. Priority shift. Tree's first policies might get the chop in the wake of Victoria's fires. He would know. Require some insightful opinion on the New York Post monkey cartoon? Why not ask the guy who described Condi Rice as President Bush's house nigger? Change is the only constant. Ready Becky M notes a climate change change. I was forced to have lunch with two repulsive and rabid environmentalists the other day. A most unpleasant experience, but I did learn something. The correct terminology for the phenomenon formerly known as global warming and later as climate change is now to be referred to as climate disruption. They've already ditched climate crisis then and extreme weather. Can't these clowns make a brand stick? Perhaps we should offer a superior, enduring title. Weather might work. In comments, otherwise we're going to be hit with new coke versions of global warming until the end of days. Great article on hungry, hungry hybrids. Ridicule welcomed. Irfan Yusuf claims, personally, I really don't care about what people say about any religion. If you wish to criticize or even ridicule religious teachings, be my guest. Let's hope Irfan is telling the truth. Lies make baby Muhammad cry. Political mechanics understood. Queensland political experts Mark Basnich five days ago. It seems the ALP still can't lift a political finger in Queensland without the press wizards at the Australian heralding it as a sign of an imminent election. One has to wonder about the depth of understanding of political mechanics and political logic required to write this stuff. The election was announced. Queensland votes on March the 21st. Give that man a prize. Penelope Cruz just described the Academy Awards as a moment of unity for the world. Bly bets voters are mugs from Andrew Bolt. Mike Steckety nails this bunch of cynical political opportunists. Only Queensland Premier Anna Bly has the experience and ability to steer Queensland through the tough times ahead, she said. She forgot to mention that it was this ability that lost the state its AAA credit rating. Voters will see through her second excuse too and realize that Labour is rushing to an election before things get much worse. If for no other reason than treating voters as mugs, she deserves a good kick in the electoral shins. Wanted, next Conservative Kerry's, if only the ABC were as eager to get balance in front of the cameras too. Wanted, coalition supporters sit in the studio audience for the ABC's live panel show Q&A on a Thursday night. It's not a Liberal Party branch stack, but the ABC's desperate bid to have a politically balanced audience. Fewer jobless to be let in. It's taken nearly a year, but the Rudd government didn't want to look completely stupid by changing its mind any sooner on an immigration program that was even stupid to start with. Sharpton gets last laugh from cartoon. Al Sharpton was very cross with the New York Post cartoon that he falsely claimed likened Barack Obama to an ape. But it turns out that Sharpton may have been even crosser with an earlier New York Post article that exposed him as a professional race baiter. 
And Hughes Bush gave him six figures. Colgate Palmolive shelled out 50000 and Macy's and Fizzer have contributed thousands to the Reverend Al Sharpton's charity. Almost 50 companies, including PepsiCo, General Motors, Walmart, FedEx, Continental Airlines, Johnson & Johnson, and Chase, and some labor unions sponsored Sharpton's National Action Network annual conference in April. Terrified of negative publicity, fearful of a consumer boycott, or eager to make nice with civil rights activists, CEOs write checks, critics say, to NAN and Sharpton, who brandishes the buying power of African-American consumers. In some cases, they hire him as a consultant. Gillard goes grubby. Julia Gillard loses her dignity with a very low attack in Parliament on Christopher Pine, the new manager of opposition business, while comparing him to Tony Abbott. In a choice between macho and mincing, I'd have gone for macho myself, she says. No class. Had she been a liberal man making the same attack on say, well, I'll leave it there. ABC chief disowns Rudd Spin from Nick Minchin's latest press release, Shadow Mi uh, Minister for Broadband, Communications and Digital Economy, Senator Nick Minchin today in Senate estimates told the ABC that it was factually incorrect for its on-air presenters to describe carbon dioxide as pollutant, which was at odds with the Rudd government's own official list of air pollutants. And you thought she was joking to Gervais. Kate Winslet's strategy worked. The Best Actress Oscar went to Kate Winslet as a former concentration camp guard in The Reader. She outlined her secret plan a couple of years ago on extras. Wind dies in Heatwave and Wind Power 2. And making monkeys of their readers, The Age published a falsehood. Black American community leaders are demanding the head of controversial Australian journalist Cole Allen after his New York Post published a cartoon depicting President Barack Obama as a monkey. No, the Post did not publish a cartoon depicting Obama as a monkey. The bill being satirized was in fact the prime responsibility of the Democrat leaders of the House of Representatives and the Senate, Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid. Only a fool would not know that, and only a race beta would pretend not to know. For the information of the age and AP, which wrote the piece, this is what depicting a president as a monkey actually looks like when done by professionals of the left at a time when they were not quite so tactically sensitive. Spare change, you can believe in Barack Obama's promise. When I arrived in Springfield a decade ago as a state senator, people said it was too hard to take on the issues of money and politics. When I arrived in Washington eight years later, the need for change was equally clear. Big money and lobbyists were clearly drowning out the aspirations of the American people. That is why on my very first day as president, I will launch the most sweeping ethics reform in history to make the White House the people's house and send the Washington lobbyists back to K Street. Third, we will institute an absolute gift ban so that no registered lobbyists can curry favor and build relationships with members of my administration based on how much they can spend. And Barack Obama's delivery. Barack Obama has been embroiled in a cronyism row after reports that he intends to make Louis Sussman, one of, the, one of his biggest fundraisers, the new U.S. ambassador in London. Mr. Sussman's reputation for hoovering large amounts of cash from deep pockets saw him nicknamed the vacuum cleaner when he raised more than $240 million for John Kerry's White House bid in 2004. He was one of Mr. Obama's biggest campaign cash bundlers, fundraisers who collect contributions from hundreds of others. He also gave $300,000 to the President's inauguration fund. Change you can't believe in after all. And an update, first Barack Obama orders the Guantanamo Bay prison closed without having figured what he'd do with the suspected terrorists it holds. Only then does he ask Pentagon experts to tell him if indeed the prison is an abuse of human rights after all. A Pentagon review of conditions at the Guantanamo Bay military prison has concluded that the treatment of detainees meets the requirements of the Geneva Convention.